obviously the big news is who's one seat up on the coaching staff, and that's Tony Larusa, who's back oh, yeah. in the game. Like you, you never get to go play for a Hall of Famer, which is ridiculous. How was your first conversation with him on the phone? Amazing. Amazing. You know, when we hired him, media was going crazy. Uh, you know, he's not gonna be able to connect with the younger guys, this, that. Uh, I was, I was reading it and I'm like, what, where is this coming from? Like, I, I get it. I get it to a certain degree, but like, he hasn't even talked to a player yet. Like he hasn't shown anything yet with this organ, like with, he's been with the organization before many years ago, but like with this group, like give like, does he get a chance or not? Well, hold and on. So, you weren't, you weren't skeptical. Not really. I was like, this is a hall of fame manager. I, you know, this guy's won a lot of games. He won a world series in 2011. Lucas. So for me, it was, it was very much. I need to like, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge anyone like I'm going to be working closely with until I actually like talk to them. Okay. Like that was, that was legitimately my approach to it. Well, like I'm not going to sit here and, and be a skeptic. I'm not going to sit here and be like overly optimistic until I get a chance to talk to him, see his philosophies. And then the big thing is like, once we get into spring training, which is where we're at now, but the first conversation was amazing. The, the key takeaway from it, from that convo for me, was he gets on the phone, Lucas, you know, I want to introduce myself. Uh, and the first, like, once we got into baseball stuff, the like first place he went was, you know, I know you guys have, at least to my knowledge, from what everyone's told me, you guys have a strong clubhouse. You know, you guys are close. I love that. One of my biggest things I've always preached as a manager is we need to have that close family environment. Uh, among the players, the coaches, top to bottom. It's a family, you know, we're all playing for each other. I'm going to have to earn your guys' respect. Whoa, I was like, wait, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> like Mr. Hall of Fame manager, you know, to a certain degree, I was expecting like, you know, this is my plan, this is what we're gonna do, like, Da, 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 da. No, no, no. I'm going to have to earn your guys' respect. Uh, I know what I'm stepping into. I know, like, the talent. I know where you guys are at, like, as a team, how close you all are. Um, you know, my main thing, I'm nervous. He told he told it, all hmm. of us. He told me on the phone. He told everyone, I'm nervous about this. But it's a good thing because it means I care. I've always felt that way about like nerves. Like I was very nervous before my first playoff game, but it's cause I cared. I wanted to win. Right. Uh, I'm nervous about this. I need to earn your guys respect. I'm going to try and show that on a daily basis. Um, with my coaching, my work. And, uh, that's pretty much how that first combo went. And I was like, wow. Okay. You know, I wasn't really expecting that. I, I was no. thinking more like he'd kind of just introduce himself. You know, I'm coming in, lay it all out there. But it was a lot more, I guess, of like an introspective conversation than I was expecting. So then you get a chance to meet him in person. Was the biggest thing you were worried about was that he might have the old man smell? <laughs> right. You know what I'm talking about. The Maybe, maybe. No, you do. You do. Your parents aren't there, but my, we, we all experienced it. You know, I'm going to smell that way at some point, you know. Maybe I haven't spent enough time around elderly people. I, I'm not totally sure what the smell is. Come on, stop. There's everybody that is listening or watching this on the John Boy Media Baseball YouTube channel is nodding because they all have somebody in their life that's got the old person smell. My grandma, my dad's mom, Grandma Tilly, loved her. Wonderful woman. Mm -hmm. I loved seeing her every Sunday, but I could not stand the smell of her apartment. I haven't noticed anything with Tony. You know, the, the biggest thing is, is, you know, he's a bit older, got to 
my thing was like, you know, is he going to move around the field well? Oh, you're checking out his agility. Are we sending him through a, a springtime agility drill? Agil- yeah, agilities and, and weightlifting. <laughs> uh, but he's he's moving around good, man. I, you know, all of our meetings have been like very concise. Weird. I don't know. I just think we're in a very good spot. Okay, that's good yeah. because I don't know if you've noticed. You guys made the playoffs last season for the first time in a dozen years. Made some interesting acquisitions in the offseason. Love the Lance Lynn deal. I'm a huge Liam Hendricks fan. Mm. You know, so I think that you guys are certainly pointed in the right direction. But then we get to a guy who's just lit it up offensively the last two years, Tim Anderson. Mm. And he was doing a little press this spring. And Tim loves to talk. That's why we love him. We love listening to him. And so he said this about the Chicago White Sox of 2021. But we have a chance to be the best team in the AL. Um, we got a chance to beat a lot of people. We just got to continue to work and keep getting better and keep rallying around each other. And um, you know, this guy's the limit at that point. Tim, don't become a politician on me. You're the most a- you're, the, you're you're the most honest athlete in Chicago. Who cares this is the if they blog about it, if they podcast about it, if they tweet about it? Who cares, man? Just say what you feel. You're the best team in the American League. Yeah, fuck it. We're the best team in the American League. <laughs> I mean, he got baited into that. Did you hear it? Well, fuck it. We're the best team in the American League. Yeah. Do you have it? Don't you have one of those T-shirts? I don't know if we have that on T-shirt. Our first T-shirt of the spring was Nick Magical, Mr. 3000. (laughs) That's funny. Did you hear that? Have you heard that story? No. He basically said... I think a very attainable goal for me as a player is to hit is to get 3000 hits. I'll, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to have 3000 hits in my career. So I want to get back to the fuck it. We're the best in the AL. Mm-hmm. Are you? Yes, but we have to show it. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, Tim, I thought Tim answered the question very well. Me too. And then I forget who who is talk uh, interviewing him, but whoever's interviewing him just baited him hard by basically putting the words in his mouth before, yeah. which is like fine, but like you know Tim, you know he played played with it, and I, I like it. I I'd, if you're gonna play like the best team in the American League, you have to believe you are, and we believe we are for sure. Uh, so yeah, that's, I, I guess I'll just leave it there. Yeah. But you know what? That's what I want. I hate it when people are like, was you here with Tim Anderson? He said, you know, he says they think they're the best team in the American league. Fuck it. If I'm a white Sox fan, that's what I want to hear out of my all-star shortstop's mouth. A hundred percent. That's what I want to hear. You know, I, like I always think this with you guys, you guys meaning pro athletes, there's we make such a big deal about bulletin board material. I think that's such bullshit. Like, are the Yankees or Twins going to play you any harder based on what Tim Anderson said? Oh, so you're talking about like, oh, like there's some ammo for like. I don't, <laughs> I don't buy that. Like the Yankees, yeah, they're they're only going to see a handful of times this year. The Twins are going to see you 19 times. They're going to kick your balls in regardless. Not because yeah. it's based on what he said. It's yeah, we you're all good, and they want to keep you wherever you are. Yeah, we all want to beat the shit out of each other. Doesn't matter. I mean, have you ever played a game harder based on what somebody said ever? No. And the thing for me is like playing a game harder doesn't work for me. <laughs> I need to be I need to be loose and free, man. I got to I got to be like chilling out there. I got to be having a good time. <laughs>